getting straight to some action today. And my first destination is actually here, underneath the bridge. And if I can push my buttons right, I'd like to show you two different things that I think are pretty interesting on this first Sylvan's Beast. The first one, most of you probably already know about. I'm gonna need a couple headshots. Okay, and a repost without killing him. And that's going to put him into this kind of sad state of either praying or begging for mercy. Also, gives you a good view of just how hideous and well designed they are. Now I could probably go ahead and finish him off here, but I don't want to. Because there's actually a more humiliating way that you can end his life. Now I just want to get across the bridge. My theory is that the Sullivan's Beasts are based on the Great Wolves from the Painted World. We'll talk more about that later. Phase 1 complete. And now... I have to go for a bit of a run. I'll probably speed this part up. So now we're here, underneath the bridge where we just fought him. And the only thing we need to do is tell him to aim for the bushes. First piece down by assisted suicide. Now let's go back to the beginning and do a proper introduction. Two very important things that I need to do to start this off. First of all, just take in this beautiful sight and then crack open today's game session beverage. So we have Pontiff Serena in the distance, lit up by the lovely dark moon. We've got an Orlando hanging out in the distance as always. The area we just ran down to under the bridge. Uh, that small building there is the entrance to Irithyll Dungeon. And Cathedral of the Deep is up there, and I think right around there is Lothric Castle. And now today's brew is a Founder's Backwoods Bastard. So let's get it cracking. Cheers to you. Long may the sun shine. Excellent. It's a Scotch L, aged in bourbon oak barrels. And I think I'll dedicate it to Creighton, who we're about to see. Because if, if any NPC in this game was going to be called a backwoods bastard, I think it would be Creighton. In this game and DS2, seems he's a bit of a psychopathic murderer. Uh, Irithyll, to me, is like a perfect microcosm of Dark Souls 3 as a whole. It's fairly linear. It's compact but it's full of environmental detail and storytelling. And there's tons of different little side quests and optional things you can do if you want to, just like this one. Uh, you know, I should probably not mess around too much because Creighton's no joke and I don't want to mess around and let him kill Cirrus or myself. As you can see, I've switched my build up. 
but I'm going to focus on this for now and we'll talk about that in a second. Easy work for now, but I will see him again soon. Thank you for your kind assistance. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. Sirius is my kind of NPC. She's got good vibes, but every time she asks to hang out, she really just wants to murder somebody. Okay. As I walk across this bridge, I think I'm going to give my future self a job. Because I would like to see this area from up there. So I switched over to a different character, and Aldrich's boss room is behind me there. Over here is the contraption to get up to the Anor Orlando bonfire. That's Pontiff Sullivan's boss room. And if we look down and to the right, we have Irithyll laid out here. And there is the bridge there that we come across. So it's all down and to the right of Aldrich's boss room, or Guinevere's chamber however you want to look at it. And if we look at it from even a different perspective, and also taking a step back in time, we have the Cathedral of Anne Orlando behind us there. And to the right, instead of the Church of Yorkshire, we have the Chapel of Guinevere. And where Irithyll should be, there's just this chapel. But now, if we look on the other side, there's actually a part of the city that we never visit that looks like Irithyll. So, if you ask me, bit of a missed opportunity here. Now there's one more thing I'd like to do before going back to live commentary. I want to tell you my version of Sullivan's story. There are two spells in the painted world that tell us that he was born and raised inside the painting. My personal fan theory is that his mother is Frida and his pops is this knight that she's looking at in this one unique painting that you can find inside the room where you first meet her. Regardless, at some point he decides to leave a snowy, overcast homeland, which is filled with strange creatures like bird people and giant wolves and tree ladies. And he makes a journey that I assume is similar to ours thus far in the game. Eventually he finds a place that reminds him of home, a city that's ruled by Gwendolyn and his dark moon knights at the foot of Anne Orlando. And this is where his villain arc begins. He makes his way through the dungeons to the profane flame in the capital below, then returns to Irithyll as a certified badass and says, hey, look at me, I'm the captain now. He creates a barrier to the city using magic that he learned from old Corvians who like to tell stories about the painted world. He gives dolls to people he trusts to allow them inside, just like another doll that allowed entry into an older painted world. By the way, this guy's name is Dingus Khan, and he's one of my favorite Soulsborne characters that I've ever created. Okay, we learn from talking to Yorkshire that Gwendolyn was sick when Sullivan took over, but the new pontiff in town still wants all threats removed. So when the Lords of Cinder wake up, he learns about Aldrich, and he decides to drop one of his dolls in his coffin, hoping to lead him to Irithyll. So Aldrich finally gets sick of eating the little skinny hollows he's being fed from Undead Settlement, and he goes to see what's up. Sullivan says, hey man, have you ever tried god meat? You should check that place out. Aldrich munches on Gwendolyn, becomes the devourer of gods, and Sullivan goes full chaotic evil. He builds an army by mutating the citizens of Irithyll into strange and twisted creatures. Ones that remind him of the place where he was raised. Alright, let's talk about the build. This one's for my brother friend, Cody V. I'm using the Black Blade Katana, and I've upped my Estus to 6 instead of 3, and I'm going to use this ring to recoup the FP from the weapon art, which I hope to use liberally. I'm calling this build, along with the fashion souls, the Horny Shinobi. Okay, 
Okay, I have my checklist pulled up on my second monitor. I'm working on having a nice chill time, but also being efficient. It's a thing I'm practicing here. Here we have our first example of a memory or an illusion of an outrider night. What they look like before Pontiff started screwing around with them at least. And I have to practice for Pontiff later, so it's gonna be parries for these nights. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a good day. I love the katana parries. Don't use them a whole lot, but the ones that have this hold weapon art, definitely my favorite. This katana in particular has a unique moveset, I think. The uh, R2s are a little different. There we go. I think they're similar to the Iato in DS1. Two crotch stabs. Two pontiff knights down. That shield will not protect your crotch from me, sir. Cool view of Lothric Castle up there. I think this area and the pontiff as a boss is really the perfect centerpiece of this game. We got another Boreal Knight illusion here. I think there was actually a version of the game where pontiff was the final boss before development was finished. Okay. I think I'm going to activate my shinobi skills here. I'd like to take this guy out before the other fire witch knows that I'm here. Uh, I need some FP. So I think I'll use these Herothelian slaves as backstab fodder. That worked out very nicely. Gonna keep up the pace while things are going well. Let's just run straight to this other fire witch. Hopefully I can take him or her or them. Very cool enemy. Not what I meant to do. Okay. That worked out. I've got some company, but no big deal. The rest of you can go play with that. I don't know if I would rather take them on up here. Try to get behind them on the road. Looks like my choice has been made for me. Okay. Last one and I'm home free. And it's a shield guy so he shouldn't be too hard. And he decided to do this deep throat magic, so easy work. Uh, I will come back for that later. And here we have what is probably the Dancer of the Boreal Valley and maybe Vort or just another one of the Boreal Knights. I think there's Five Boreal Knights total that we see in the game. Three scattered out through the world, and then Vort and the Dancer. And I think you only see four memories or illusions here. But no, I just want to go catch this bonfire and then backtrack to Doris. Unique illusory banister here. I bet that really screwed with people that first played this game coming from the older games. Seems I have to face tank a couple of hits before I can get the parry off on these pontiff knights. Sweet jobs. I 
I don't have much to say about Doris here, other than I like the miracle, and I'll probably use it later, potentially in the painted world, which I think I'm going to next. Speaking of bastard, I'm getting a little thirsty. So I think I'll have a few sips and head back to Firelink because there's several things I need to set up for the rest of this area. There are three things I need to do here. Number one, let's talk to Sears. That dark spirit with one of his eyeless fingers, vile bastard offspring who lurk in the darkness. I would not have made it alone. You have my deepest gratitude. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. And next up, I need to send Grey Rat on his next pillage. Discovering Irifil in the Boreal Valley, all in a day's work. What do you think? Shall I go and see what I can find? Mmm, a fine choice. I am Grey Rat the Thief. What I bring back will be worthy of that name. <laughs> Goodbye. And lastly, this kind of pains me to do this, but I want to take out Yuria because I want to see Anri's quest line to the end. In case you didn't know, Yuria is Frida's sister. If you kill Frida and come back and talk to Yuria, she says, Hey, you have the soul of my sister, Elfrida. But Yuria is a bit of a shinobi herself, so this should be a worthy duel here. This is not a very good battle arena. Okay, I have to get a parry. I'm wondering how many hills she has. I think that's two so far. was a close one. Risky move, but it paid off. Okay, I think I'll go hand these into the Shrine Maiden and then go back to Yorkshire's church. We'll continue there. And now that we've taken out Yuria, we can go handle this not so conspicuous statue. I think I could have played through this game a thousand times and never found that by myself. There is something extremely satisfying to me about using this perp cloud and watching things help slowly disintegrate away. It's kind of a tragedy what I just did. I think she's like one of, what, three living pilgrims in the entire universe that we know of. You got Yoel, you got her, and then the 
pilgrim in the Ring City. It's the only ones I know about. But she had to go because Anri has to live. And the way that works is if you kill Pontiff and that pilgrim's still alive, then Anri will end up dead. But I guess I really just killed Yuria for the heck of it. Okay, now I need to go online. I have no idea why you have to be online for Creighton to invade you here, but that's how it is. Oh, hey, this is a Corvian. In my thinking and theory crafting about all the connections between this place and the Aerithil, I mean this place in the uh, painted world, I did not remember that Corvian being here. Okay, I should probably shut up. Well, alrighty then. I guess it was about time I got humbled, huh? Okay, no time to stop here, but Corvian? Giant grave with an undead bone shard behind it. Never really thought about this place, but I bet there's some kind of significance to this area and the fact that Creighton invades you here. This red phantom version really is a bastard. I think since he's killed me once already, I don't feel too much shame in exploiting his biggest weakness. Weakness to Cliff. Get off my lawn. Excellent weapon there, the Dragon Slayer's Axe. I think most people know that, but... You can get crazy damage out of it uh, with just a raw gem and very minimal stats. Buff it with lightning weapon and it's kind of broken, honestly. Alright, we got some more of Pontiff's monstrosities here. These are slightly different from the other dogs in the game. They're called Erythelian Hounds, and they have basically human skulls. It's probably the same thing as the slaves that we see around. Another one of my highly speculative theories is that a lot of his creations have the ribs exposed because he was trying to do that like dark magic injection in a lot of things. But the Pontiff Knights were the only one strong enough to take it. So now they do that sexy deep throat magic and everything else just had its gut rotted away. Gotta equip the trusty torch in a dark room. I think I'll just mosey through here, but tempted to clear the room. I do enjoy using my torch when I can in any Soulsborne game. One of my main gripes, I love the torches in the games, but they make them not very useful. I just want to hold Souls game in the dark. Maybe I just need to find a mod. Oh, I forgot about you. Wait, where is the screaming lighting? usually screams as soon as you drop down there. And that was really odd. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the rest of you can live. I'm going to go grab this twinkly over here. And then probably just make a run for the dungeon bonfire. These sewer centipedes might be my vote for most disturbing of Sullivan's creations. Yeah. 
I enjoyed that synchronized jump and then death animation there. That was real nice. I see absolutely no reason to disturb these sewer ladies down here. So I think I'll go shinobi mode. Try to make a run straight for Sigurd. I thought that was Grey Rat's ashes back in the corner for a second, but I don't think it was. I think as long as Sigurd is alive and over here, which he is, Grey Rat should be safe. Well, well, hasn't it been all too long? It's good to see you. Let us make a toast. To your valor, my sword, and our sworn duties. Long may the sun shine. <laughs> my brother, I'm with you. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. The only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little toasty myself. Oh yeah, these physics on these bowls are incredible. Check this out. Boom. Perfect stack every time. Yeah, that backwards bastard was quite the high gravity beer. So, hitting me a little harder than normal. Alright, this guy. Checking out the large chest over here. Pretty cool. I need to take a second to look at these other paintings when I get a chance. But I need to take out some silver knights first. And yet another classy, tasteful act of pure fan service. <laughs> Harkening back to Dark Souls 1. I'm cool with it, man. I like every bit of it. I love that I can go pick up Smo's hammer right now. I wouldn't want a Dark Souls 3 that I couldn't do that in. I want a Dark Souls 3 DLC to release now. That's just the entire game of Dark Souls 1 that you can play through in the Dark Souls 3 engine. I would be super happy about that. Actually, you know what? Okay, to be honest, I like the Dark Souls 1 engine a lot. Maybe even better, so... I don't actually know that I would care for that. Dark Souls 1 is perfect the way it is. Things may get real sloppy here soon. I can already feel it. Okay, on to the shortcut for Pontiff. Okay, if I remember correctly, I've got a couple staircases full of idiots that are gonna try to ruin my day. Wait a minute. Who am I invaded by? Ah. This is because I killed Yuria. I almost never do that. It's possible that I've never fought this NPC. Got me. Mannequin claws. I think that might be the first time I've ever fought that NPC. It's very rare for me to have a first time. I'm pretty pumped right now. I was not expecting that. A giant portion of my fun is like theory crafting out. 
Come on, you idiots. Let me have my uh, celebration for having a cherry popped in Dark Souls 3. I get it. I get it. You can pew pew. You can pew pew your little blue balls of light. I don't care. So, a giant portion of the fun for me is theory crafting out, like while I'm at work and stuff, an entire run. I think this shortcut is basically useless, but why not? So, I'll go like four or five days maybe, just playing in my head. And so by the time I play, I've already made the run mentally like 20 times. And so what I'm really doing is just trying to perfectly execute the fictional run that I've done in my head. So when something surprises me, it's a good time. It's a good feeling. Oh, I can't forget to go back and pick up Creighton's armor at the beginning. That was the reason that I wanted to kill him in that uh, second spot. Oh yeah, that's the illusory wall ring. Hey, we're here. We've made it to the end. To the pontiff himself. Whoa. I said things are gonna get sloppy, but maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just lubricated enough to take this home on a first attempt. Okay, that one wasn't so great. But when they shield up, kick them in the dick. Easy. That's a brutal stab at that height. Makes me hurt a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah, you guys. You guys never cease to annoy me. Actually, those two slaves right there are like the biggest F you when you're first playing and it takes you, you know, several tries, of course. Many, many tries to beat Pontiff. And you're in that mode where you're just like sprinting back and you've got those two idiot slaves there and then the pontiff knights you gotta deal with. It's mean, man. Alright, I'll take you out. But I don't think I'll worry about the, uh... the parade down there walking away. They can do their thing. Definitely don't need this, but... Can't ignore an illusory wall. Alright, one more witch over here. And then I think it's boss time. If I hadn't already picked up their armor set. I would like to have that. The Fire Witch armor set. Last thing on the checklist before Pontiff. Getting that bastard Kraden's armor. Since we killed him the second time. I don't really remember what it looks like. Dude. It matches the horny shinobi theme. Not today, Satan. It's very important to me that I do not take a hit before I go in. Sweet. In the clear. Okay. I'd planned to like lay out my story and lore theories on the pontiff at this point. 
I didn't do a very good job of it. So I'm just going to stick that either at the end or at the beginning. I'm ready to do this though. I have to get at least one parry. I'm going to go for this first one. But if I don't get at least one, it doesn't count. I got a quick game. God, that feels good. I did not expect to get that, to be completely honest with you. My damage is better than I thought I was going to be. Oh, this... Why does this seem easy? Why does this seem easy right now? I'm very confused. Okay. Okay, okay. was ever a case of being over cocky and immediately paying for it that last fight was it so now do what I did but better it, it felt just as good that time I had just as much doubt in myself too first phase I'm mowing through this first phase but now back up and be patient I actually kind of like to leave the shade alive as long as you dodge correctly it's easier to punish because you, you know what's coming Such a cool fight, man. Definitely in my top five of all Soulsborne games. Oh, I'm tempted to go for a parry for the win. I couldn't do it. That first failure still stings too much. That feeling of a soul's victory never gets old. I'm very thankful just have had some time to chill and play video games today so i think i'm just gonna sit and soak in this feeling i have for a little bit until next time oh hey boys check me out i'm the pontiff now oh hell that wasn't supposed to happen